I'm Chelsea Schwartz of Streaming Wars. And I'm Sarah Carey of Smells Like Teen Angst. And we're here on that hashtag show to review Coming to America. This is the sequel to, wait for it, Coming to America. What? What? <laughs> oh my God. First of all, I want to just start by saying the original Coming to America is one of my all-time favorite films. And if anything needed a sequel, it was this movie. And I'm so excited to get into this with you, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. I still watch this movie like multiple times a year. I laugh just as hard as I did when I first watched the original. And I have been so excited ever since I saw the trailer. Because before that, I was a little iffy. But then seeing the trailer, I'm like, I'm ready. Uh, so Coming to America was just one of those first worldwide hits that really resonated with everybody because of these timeless themes. And I think it's also one of the first films to feature an all-Black cast and resonate worldwide as well, which is just more reason why we should have had a sequel much earlier. And I'm so excited that we're finally here. The moment is here. And I've seen the movie now. And I must say, I am completely satisfied. Yeah, that's awesome. I, have, I, I feel like I need to watch it like one more time. I enjoyed myself. I had a couple of issues. I loved all the nods to the original. Uh, but I do think it's a movie everyone should check out because I was entertained. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, there were some moments where I felt like it was constant callbacks, which was fun as we were revisiting things to a point. And then I was like, I want a new story. Where is the new story? And there is a new story here, but it felt like it could have been unpacked further. Like I would have wanted more from Hakeem's daughters and just more of, uh, and, and maybe more Randy Watson. We can always have more Randy Watson. Always more Randy Watson and sexual chocolate. Absolutely. Um, I was like, but you know, Eddie Murphy himself said that he already has a third one in mind. So maybe the second one was just to tie one and three together so that they could really unpack and get into a different story for the third one. And I'd be very curious about that. But uh, yeah. in terms of the callbacks though, oh my God, so many fun, great moments. Did you catch the Trading Places callback? I did. I thought that was awesome. I love when we get Peaches and her sister. Like, yes. <laughs> oh my God. I couldn't believe that almost every single actor from the first film is back. And I don't mean main characters, like little small glimpses, like people that you wouldn't even think about. They're acknowledged. Even Soul Glow is acknowledged deep in the background and subtly in the music. And like, yeah. it's so good. Uh, also, one of my favorite callbacks was Babar, the return of Babar. I'm so and, glad and it, you caught that too. Oh my God. So in the first movie, it's baby Babar and Hakeem's walking with his father, the king. And he just goes, oh, good morning, Babar, or good evening, Babar. And the Babar walks away. And mm -hmm. it's just this really subtle, like whatever, an elephant walks through. Now it's Hakeem with his child. Yeah. You know, we've come full circle. It's, it's, it's the king and you know, it blew my mind. It was the same scene. It was the exact same scene with the next generation and then grown up Babar. So one, I need to know, is this the original elephant? Because they went so far to get like peaches back and stuff like that. Is this the original elephant from the movie? I really need to know, burning desire. <laughs> Someone get us this answer. It is a need. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Um, also, can, can we talk about some of the performances? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. Sexual Chocolate's always the best performance in the movie. That goes without saying. But in Vogue, Salt and Peppa, Gladys Knight, like, they, they spared no expense in just bringing the best of the best into this movie. It was that whole moment I thought was hilarious. I was like, who else is coming out? Who else right? from the 90s? Who else? Like, it was just like one cool person after the other, and I loved it. And it's also, it just makes you wonder, I, I, I think I read somewhere, uh, I don't remember which cast member, but they were talking about coming to America, that they were like, honestly, I would have done this movie for free. Like, and I, I feel that, like, I think everybody wanted to be part of coming to America. Like, I would have loved to have been part of coming to America, you know? <laughs> Can I just be an extra somewhere wandering yeah. around New York City? Just really like in the, in the far back of like a, a, a marriage scene or like crowning the new queen or whatever, like 500 people back, just, just to yeah. say I was there, you know, it's fine. And can we talk about Wesley Snipes? I think people forget that he is a really good comedy actor. I completely forgot that. And he's so hilarious as like the rival chief. 
uh, or king of the of the neighbor what oh my gosh i wish i could just i just completely forgotten the name of the neighboring town but it was like it was like a neighbor village or something ridiculous yeah and, he was in, he was the right amount of crazy for that comedic role it was mm-hmm. it was absolutely perfect so incredible he's yes. so good wesley snipes thank you for coming back to comedy yeah uh, and then we let's also acknowledge, you know, Ruth Carter did the costumes for the entire mm-hmm. film. And Ruth Carter is my all time favorite costume designer. And some of these pieces for Zamunda were just stunning. Stunning. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Like we still get that entrance for like the, the princess and we have the dancers and they all still have the incredible costumes and her costumes are incredible. We even get the barking princess. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hop on one leg, bark like a dog. And here we are 30 years later, she is still hopping on one leg, barking like a dog. The woman has been cursed, cursed. for 30 years. That was incredible. It's, it's literally, there's, if you had a question about oh. any specific character in this movie, it, it is answered. We, we revisit the barber shop in yes. Queens. And like, they look amazing. <laughs> like one of my favorite parts of that movie was the, the old Jewish guy with its aha. Uh-huh. And like, where is the spoon he, yeah and he got a new joke this time it wasn't yeah. nearly as good as the spoon joke but it was there it was, it was there it was a good one yeah and i love all the upgrades to the costumes like kind of keeping on that like akeem and sammy show up to new york and they're in like similar garb but modern yeah and i also noticed like because you know in the original they had like the like real lions and furs and they switched those to gold pieces. Yeah. And I thought that was really like a really cool upgrade that everybody got. I completely agree. Uh, yeah, overall, like, I mean, I really don't have any solid complaints other than I would have liked to unpack more of the story, but what about you? I have one really big one because I feel like it could have been done a completely different way. And it's the way they set off the story. So Akeem has to find his male heir because he has three daughters. And we learn that in my favorite scene of the original one, they actually, which is the date scene, I was Joan of Arc in a former life. <laughs> uh, they do meet Leslie Jones and her friends and take the girls back. And Akeem is like sitting there with Leslie Jones on the couch. And then she drugs him and rapes him. And that is how he has an heir. And I think that is really unnecessary when yeah. they, it honestly, and like, and are we supposed to believe Akeem was a virgin? I do not. It could have very- Well, look, we knew he wasn't a necessarily a proper virgin because of his bathers. Exactly. Why was the mom not a bather? Why was the mom not one of the bathers he had a consensual like intercourse with? And then the father finds out she's pregnant and sends them off because he's- That a actually would have, that would have been a good twist. I mean, honestly, they could have left it exactly where it was without the date rape drug. Like because that they could have just con- had consensual sex. Who, like why? Yeah. They like had an issue. Like that's, I, ooh, sorry, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. No, you're totally fine. You're you're you're, you're passionate in this moment. It, it was a weird choice. I will give you that. Uh, I was like, but I was. It worked. It also works. It's just in this Me Too era. Why? Why? We don't need like. It just felt so dated. That was like the one really dated moment. Like that would have been. But also, that scene happened technically in the 80s, which would be dated and I guess realistic of the times, if we're going to look at it that way. It's not excusable. And maybe that's the lens they had, but I feel like because that scene happened so early in the movie, that's kind of what tainted my vision throughout the rest of it, which is why I'm like, I was entertained, but I was still like holding on to that moment. Mm -hmm. I really like your bather theory though. And then having the king send the bather away and like Hakeem knows nothing about it. That's actually really great. It's so easy. Like, why was that? I do have to say though, that as much as we're knocking uh, Leslie Jones in that moment, her character, uh, she was phenomenal in this movie though. And I mean, I love her in general, but Leslie's relationship with uh, Lisa Mm -hmm. and like, how she totally takes Lisa away from being this queen to being back to as that queen's girl from New York. You yes. know, like, so good. Exactly. And I love that also Lisa, she's like, it's fine. It's not like I was a virgin. I was like, no, we all know Lisa was banging Daryl. It's fine. <laughs> right? Uh, I am really surprised that we didn't see Daryl. That was, was my sister. big shocker of the moment. 
Yeah, Daryl or the sister. Where was the sister? Yeah. I mean, I, I know, I think Eddie addressed this, that we feel like their story was wrapped up. We know the two of them got together and they're living their life in the soul glow yeah. fortune and whatever. So they didn't need to address it, but it would have been nice to have seen them, I guess. Um, yeah. I do like that we got a McDowell's in Zamunda, you know, <laughs> and that we brought the staff, like the full staff the from full Queens staff. to Zamunda, like. We couldn't have left Louis Anderson in Queens. He needed to come to the, I loved it though. I love seeing Louis. Like, that's great. It was just so funny. I honestly thought Louis Anderson had passed. So I like, I don't know why I thought that, but I did. He's in Search Party on HBO Max. I didn't know that. So <laughs> I in the movie, I was like, oh my God, he's still alive. I just had one of those like, oh, moments. You know. All right, so give me like your two sentence pitch of um, whether people should watch this film or not, like what you're gonna sell people on right now. Okay, okay. If you are wanting to watch a movie that is a full circle, nostalgic, ready for your children to then show their children, fun, hilarious movie, check out Coming to America. That's great. I'm going <laughs> to add that if you've missed classic Eddie Murphy, and you needed to return to Zamunda, this is the movie for you. So anyway, from this journalist, I'm giving it two thumbs up. Go watch uh, Coming to America on Amazon Prime Video. It gets one and, and a half. One and a half. <laughs> one and a half thumbs for her. She's cut <laughs> half of her thumb off. Uh, that was a little dark. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Coming to America, now available on Amazon Prime Video. Thank you guys for watching our little review. You can catch more from me on Streaming Wars every week on that hashtag show. And where can they find you? Uh, you can find me over at Smells Like Teen Eggs doing reviews of angsty movies and television shows as well as Popping Off at Pops, our Riverdale after show. There you go. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe to that hashtag show everywhere you can. And we'll talk to you guys real soon.